Good morning. Today is Tuesday, the 27th of October, and I am delighted uh, to be with you this morning for a morning prayer. Our opening sentence is from Psalm 19, verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises. Declare to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. O come, let us adore him. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 140. Deliver me, O Lord, from evildoers, and preserve me from the violent, who imagine evil in their hearts, and stir up strife all the day long. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the ungodly. Preserve me from the violent who have purposed to overthrow my steps. The proud have laid a snare for me and spread out a net with cords. They have set traps in my way. I said unto the Lord, You are my God. Hear the voice of my prayer, O Lord. O Lord God, the strength of my salvation, you have covered my head in the day of battle. Let not the ungodly have their desire, O Lord. Let not their evil imagination prosper, lest they be too proud. Let not those who encompass me lift up their heads. Let the evil of their own lips consume them. Let hot burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire and into the pit, that they may never rise up again. A slanderer shall not prosper upon the earth. Evil shall hunt the wicked person to overthrow him. I am sure that the Lord will avenge the poor and maintain the cause of the helpless. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto your name and the just shall continue in your sight. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We continue with the lesson of the day, Acts chapter 5, verse 12 through 42. 
Now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people by the hands of the apostles, and they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared join them, but the people held them in high esteem. And more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, that as Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on some of them. The people also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. But the high priest rose up, and all who were with him, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, they arrested the apostles and put them in public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. And when they had heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and began to teach. Now when the high priest came and those who were with him, they called together the council, all the synods of the people of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came, they did not find them in prison. So they returned and reported, we found the prison securely locked, securely locked, and the guards standing at the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now when the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these words, they were greatly perplexed about them, wondering what this would come to. And someone came and told them, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain with the officers went and brought them, but not by force, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest questioned them, saying, We strictly charged you not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers, fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And as we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care that what you are about to do with these men and before the days Thudius rode, Thudas rose up claiming to be a somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So, in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan is... For if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice, and when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple, from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that, preaching that the Christ is Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The canticle is a song to the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God, for you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being, 
and yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. Uh, please join uh, with me in prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, and give us a boldness, a boldness to love you without reservation, a boldness to seek to do your will, a boldness, uh, a boldness that will not be deterred from the mission and ministry that you give us as sons and daughters of the King. Strengthen our walk and our witness, O Lord, but in all things give us humility and compassion so that the words that we say and the deeds we do will not be an attempt to edify ourselves, but to always bring, bring glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, and ultimately to invite and encourage others to inquire about this Jesus, to see that he is the Messiah, the Christ, your anointed one, and that his invitation is open to every family, language, people, and nation. An invitation to become sons and daughters of God and heirs of the kingdom, kingdom with Jesus, our Christ, our Messiah, our Lord and Savior. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Well, as we reflect on the text today, um, we see again the many signs and wonders that are done by not only Peter, but the apostles. Peter's mentioned here, of course, as we know, he is generally treated, is treated as the first among equals. He's always listed first. He's considered the leader, as we see. We, we say that simply because that's the evidence presented to us in the, in the scriptures. And you see almost... Um, almost a mysticism that's associated with Peter. You see that carried out in, in verse 15 where the sick, the lame, those who are unable to, that have some type of physical ailment are laid out so that the shadow of Peter would fall upon them and, and, that, and the belief was that they would be healed. And that's almost a superstition, but it's the same. The reason it's there, I, I think, is to show us the continuity between the work of the Holy Spirit. The miracles of Jesus have also, through the power of the Holy Spirit, been transferred to the church. And, and so we are seeing a continuity with the work of Jesus, his mission, his ministry, being carried out and ongoing and continuing. He has ascended into heaven. Remember, uh, Pentecost uh, comes 10 days after the ascension. So he is, uh, and he is currently ascended to the Father where we await his coming again. And as he promised, I will send you the Holy Spirit and here you will do the wonders. And we see in the church the wonders of the Spirit uh, being done not to the glorification of the church as the people, but to the glorification of God as Jesus always glorified God. Being the second person of the Trinity, he could have demanded our, our allegiance, demanded our worship. But as the scriptures tell us, tells us, he counted equality with God, something not to be held onto and grasped, but he put it aside so that he could offer his self, his soul, his body on the cross for us. And so we have a continuity with the miracles. Now, in the modern church, the church of today, miracles continue. But here's the thing, we are not Jesus, we are not the apostles, and we are always seeking to follow the will of God, whatever his will is. And so we cannot, and I don't think we should, presume to simply call upon the power and the conditions that God uh, lays out for us in a sense of magic, that we can call down and he will do our bidding for our will and our sake. No, I don't think we can do that. The miracles continue, but they continue as part of God's plan, as part of the evidence of who Jesus is and in the power of the Holy Spirit, never in our power. And always to his credit, his glory, 
And, and again, we can, we, can, we can call upon him. We should. We're, the scriptures tell us, are any of you sick? Call the people to anoint with oil. Pray for healing. But it is up to God uh, to, and, for, and to us to follow his lead. Well, here, what's happening is they are following him, and the Holy Spirit is blessing and, in, 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 if you will, and endorsing the leadership of the early church. And so we're seeing miracles occurring, and yet we're also seeing opposition. As they opposed Jesus, so they will oppose the people of God, his church. And so in verse 18, the high priest, uh, 17, rises up, and in, er, in verse 18, the apostles are arrested and put in prison. They, the, these fellows have figured out how to stamp out Christianity, <laughs> take out the leadership, throw them in prison. If that doesn't work, seek to kill them. And in fact, that's the work that was done by this leadership against Jesus, our, our Lord and Savior. But what happens is it's not God's plan that they be martyred at this time, that they stay in prison. And so what happens? During the night, an angel of the Lord opens the prison doors and leads them out and then gives them very interesting instructions. Normally you would expect, go and hide. <laughs> They're out to get you. Go into the center, the very center, the heart of Judaism. Go into the temple and speak to the people the words of this life. My, my Bible has life capitalized, the life in Christ, the life in Jesus. And they obeyed. And at daybreak, that's where they were found, teaching the good news of Jesus. And we see and we read almost the irony, uh, the, the, prison, the prisoners to bring them before the council so that they can be, well, probably in a kangaroo court, tried and convicted and, and you know, either sentenced to long imprisonment or to death. And yet they're not to be found, except where? at the heart of Judaism, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, and so uh, you see the perplexity uh, of the leadership, wondering what this would come to. God knows what it was gonna come to. It was gonna come to a further uh, expansion of Christianity, uh, uh, not for the sake of a new religion, but for the sake of sharing the good news of Jesus. Christians are not about our religion, we're about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, look, the people you sent out and put in prison, they're in the temple teaching the people. And, and notice at this point, uh, they still want them crushed, but they're not gonna do this by force because they realize the people are receiving healings, are receiving the teachings, and so they're afraid that if we are forcibly arrest, remember, it's the same thing with Jesus. Uh, Jesus was arrested at the Garden of Gethsemane at night under, under the shroud of darkness and secrecy. And so here, in the, in the daylight, they encouraged them to come, but not by force. For they were afraid the people themselves would stone, uh, stone them. And so what happens? They're warned. We charged you. Don't teach in his name. You're filling Jerusalem with all of this teaching and you're intending to bring this man's blood upon us, which of course they had already done by their behavior of having Jesus executed. But here are the important words. Remember these refrigerator magnet sayings that you can put that, that remind you? Here's a critical teaching that we hold on to now as they held on to then. We must obey God rather than men. Wow. Our pledge of allegiance is to no country as a primary pledge, but it is first and foremost to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, we see evidence in the scriptures that yes, we as Christians are call to live in the communities that we're found. And just like the, the Jews who were in exile and in Babylon, Jeremiah the prophet said, look, go and marry, have children, build homes, pray for the blessing of the land, pray for the blessing of your oppressing country. 
Uh, we were blessed to be born in the United States. I, don't, I personally don't think of the United States as an oppressing country to me and to my group. But in any event, we as Christians are to pray for the blessing upon the countries and the places wherever we are found, wherever we live. We're to be agents of good news. And so, uh, but, but remember, but remember, we must obey God rather than men. That's the reason Christianity cannot be tolerated or is not tolerated by totalitarian governments wherever they're found or totalitarian people and dictators wherever they're found because they want your absolute allegiance. And we as Christians, our allegiance is first and foremost to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, one God, three persons. And so it enrages them so much that they really, verse 33, they've decided let's execute them just like we did Jesus. And then a Pharisee named Gamaliel speaks up, a teacher of the law held in honor he says, send them out a minute. I want to talk to the council alone. And he basically gives a recounting of how uh, various rebellions uh, have been uh, died out once the leader died out. Because if they were charismatic in that sense, you take out the leadership and the thing falls apart. And so he basically says, you know, that he gives two examples of where this has happened. And then he, of course, it's the reflection on Jesus. We've, he's been executed, he's dead. If this is from man, it will fall apart, as it has in the past. But if it's from God, we need to be careful because, as he says in verse 39, you might even be found opposing God. And they take his advice. Now, I, the irony, they still beat the daylights out of them, verse 40, and then they charged them, don't you speak in the name of Jesus? And then they let them go with that stern warning. I guess, you know, beating is different than executing, I guess. What happens? They continue to honor God more than man. And every day in the temple, from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that the Christ, I love the order here, that the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, is Jesus. Again, the critical message for the people of God is not social justice or waving and, and being wrapped in a flag, the central teaching is always the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, the savior of this world is Jesus. That's our primary, our central, our must foundational core doctrine and belief. And when that is proclaimed, we will uh, encounter opposition, persecution, ridicule, arrest, imprisonment, maybe even execution like our Lord and Savior. But look at the example of the disciples here, the apostles. They gave thanks to God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for finding us worthy to be, pro uh, to be persecuted for the name of Jesus Christ. They found joy in their suffering. They did not, you do not hear, woe is me, woe are us. But praise be to God that you have found us worthy. Remember, they had abandoned and run away from Jesus and gone into hiding. Now they're empowered by the Holy Spirit, empowered by the resurrection. And they go right back into the temple doing exactly what they had been warned, do not do. And I think we can draw a lot of strength from this witness that's held before us. Well, my friends, let's now continue with the Apostles' Creed. Again, a centrality, uh, a, a declaration of dependence, not independence. By the way, I'm using some American phrases here. Perhaps it's because the election system, we're only one week away from the election. But never misread me. I love our country, but I love our God even more. And I believe that we in this country have a responsibility uh, to be agents of God's kingdom here and even around the world. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us and lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness and let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. The prayer for today comes from this past Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things, both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people. And in our time, grant us your peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And on Tuesdays, our prayer is for peace. The peace of God which passes all understanding. The peace and serenity that can be found even in the midst of arrest and trial and even torture. The peace of God the peace of Jesus Christ. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom, defend us, your humble servants, and all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The second prayer for our common mission to boldly proclaim Jesus or to boldly proclaim the Christ is Jesus. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and you sent your blessed son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're getting ready to move into that place where you, led by the Holy Spirit, can pray for, um, as the Holy Spirit directs you, and as your heart is led, intercessions, prayers, and thanksgivings. Of course, I... Um, I guess I could share that the Holy Spirit has placed in my heart that we are exactly uh, one week, seven days away from our elections in the United States. And there is a prayer on page 655 of the uh, 2019 Book of Common Prayer. And my own county here, Sumter County, reports that over a quarter of the residents, that is registered voters of Sumter County, have already voted. And so the election day has begun, if you will. And so I want to, I've done this before, but I want to again today, one week away, uh, where a quarter of our, of our county has already voted, I'd like to pray for this upcoming election, both national and statewide and local, right down uh, to the local level. And I invite you to join with me, praying from wherever you are. Uh, page 655, if you're following, 
in the 2019 Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, to whom we must account for all our powers and privileges, guide and direct, we humbly pray, the minds of all the that fit persons to serve. Grant that in the exercise of our choice, we may promote your glory and the welfare of this nation. This we ask for the sake of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's take a moment for our prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings uh, that the Holy Spirit prompts you. In Jesus' most precious name, amen. Let us continue now with the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world, by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Uh, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And a prayer of St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. There are two things I'd like to share with you today as we wrap up. Uh, one, of course, is a reading from Fred Rogers and uh, it's a wonderful, again, teaching uh, on... Um, on, on basically how to be humble uh, and to actually embrace our faults, our failings, and to learn from them. Uh, the other is uh, from a new book by Hoda Kopi, um, Cutby. Uh, I really need this, needed this today. And it's done by Days, and she cites in there um, a Lutheran minister. Uh, if I were thinking theologically, and I, I guess I theologically I always am, the fellow's a bit of a heretic. But the truth of the matter is, even a heretic, like a broken clock, gets things right on occasion. And uh, I'm not here to bash him, so I'm going to leave that alone. But the words that he spoke here, I'm repeating because, well, when we've been talking about prayer, or as Fred Rogers talks about wishes, um, you know, sometimes, as we know, things just don't go the way that we think they should. And so this is actually a word of wisdom from a person who... You know, I wish I could claim and claim that, you know, follow all of his teachings. I can't. But this one I think he got right, because this one I think is based on the scriptures. Uh, and so, uh, and a proper reading of the scriptures. Uh, sadly, he fell into the trap of um, uh, that sort of modern German 
thinking from the 19th and 20th centuries that uh, really uh, just kind of fell into that idea that of skepticism and uh, seeking, uh, quote, the historical Jesus by, but then dis discounting the history that's recorded in the scriptures and reading things from a hypercritical lens of, uh, 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 that, that's just, it, it ran off the rails. Well, here we go. This is helpful. At least I hope you find it to be, I do. Eventually, all things fall into place. Until then, laugh at the confusion, live for the moments, and know everything happens for a reason. In recognizing the sovereignty of God, I think we can do just that, that God is sovereign. We don't need to take ourselves too seriously. We know that he's got things in his palm, in his control, and ultimately, um, we need to just remember he is God and we're not. And then I think we can get a chuckle. And in fact, I think we can enjoy life a whole lot more. This world is, uh, you know, it's got corruption. It's, it's broken. The, the, the devil is here. But you know, God's beauty, God's majesty is greater. Jesus Christ came to save and, and, and redeem. And I think we uh, can actually enjoy much of this world with the knowledge that Jesus is Lord and Savior. God is, control, is in control and his blessings continue to pour out upon us, sometimes in a beautiful sunrise, sunset, sometimes in, in, in looking at the environment around us and just enjoying those wonderful benefits that God has given us. Well, now from Fred Rogers, uh, the idea I think that he comes to of learning from our mistakes and, and well, you know, quite frankly, um, well, doing that. A young apprentice, a, pl a young apprentice, applied to a master carpenter for a job. The older man asked him, do you know your trade? Yes, sir, the young man replied proudly. Have you ever made a mistake? The older man inquired. No, sir, the young man answered, feeling certain he would get the job. Then there's no way I'm going to hire you, said the master carpenter, because when you make one, that is a mistake, you won't know how to fix it. It's a lot to be learned from our mistakes. I often use the Edison light bulb sort of analogy. He had to learn a lot, a lot of ways how not to make a light bulb before finally the filament lit up and stayed lit and didn't burn up. Uh, I think we can learn from our mistakes. And I think the greatest danger is not trying, uh, being afraid of risk. And so go out there today and enjoy life under the knowledge that God is sovereign, he's in control. Uh, not everything is a dark cloud. In fact, I prefer to begin the day in seeking joy. Uh, I have a friend who's a priest and his, his words at the beginning of the day, uh, as he tells me, uh, is, um, Lord, I, I know that you're gonna be doing wonderful things today and I wanna be a part of that. There's a sense of optimism under Christ that I can get my head wrapped around with that. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, God willing. And in the meantime, just enjoy and be a blessing as you are blessed. Have a wonderful day.